Hey quilters, I'm Pam Heller, AccuQuilts cutting expert. And I'm Erica Botker, AccuQuilts creativity expert. Welcome to today's show called Starry Blocks and Color Pops. Today we are relaunching the Go Mill and Stars 8 inch finish die and sharing new and colorful project ideas. That's right. We have a lot of fun in store for you today. We've got fun prizes, brilliant project ideas, and a vibrant trunk show. We do, it's super fun, I can't wait. And in just a little bit, we'll be joined by quilt historian, Barbara Brackman, to hear about the history and background of the Mill and Stars block. That's she right. She knows all things. She does. Well, let's not wait any longer. Here's a look at our now permanent Go Mill and Stars eight inch finish die. Create dazzling projects that will put a twinkle in any viewer's eye with the Go Mill and Stars die. This user-friendly block on board or bob die features three shapes and can cut one four color block in a single pass through any Go fabric cutter. With screen printed letters, built in quarter inch seam allowances and specialized dog ears, piecing and assembling this block is effortless. Since the Mill and Stars die finishes at eight inches, think about pairing it with other dies and cubes that finish to the same size to make radiant throw quilts, stellar wall hangings, and more. Your quilting projects will light up a room with this brilliant die because at AccuQuilt we help you cut time so you can quilt more. Quilters, we have bundles available to help you save and get your hands on the Go Mill and Stars die if you weren't able to during its month of the Die to Try series. That's right. During its original launch, the Go Mill and Stars sold out within eight days. That's eight days. So to get started right away with this now permanent die, we have the Go Mill and Stars 8-inch finished with matte bundle. It comes with the Go Mill and Stars die as well as a 6x12 cutting mat. That's right. There's also the Go Block on Board favorite eight inch die bundle that comes with, of course, the Go Mill and Stars plus some of our favorite eight inch finish bob dies. The Go Hattie's Choice, the Go Weather Vane, and the Go Maple Leaf plus a six by 12 and a six by 24 inch cutting mat. Quilters, be sure to check our website to find other current offers. That's right. You can also find many of our products at your local AccuQuilt retailer. To find the retailer who's closest to you, check out the store locator. It's at the top of the page at AccuQuilt.com. If you don't have one nearby, be sure to tell your local quilt shop that you would love to shop for Go Dyes at their store. All right, let's kick things off with a good look at this die and what makes it so fun. That's right. All right, so first of all, it is on a six by 12 die board. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna fit through all of our Go Cutters, including that Go Me. Yes. You wanna make sure you have a six by 12 cutting mat. That way you make sure that it covers all the shapes. So it just has three shapes. Right. And the cool thing about this particular block is that it's great. It's super easy to make. It is. And we have specialized dog ears and those quarter inch seams built in. And we're gonna talk about this when we cut one, how some of the edges have those specialized dog ears that are flat. Yes. And others are curved. And flats go match with flats and curves go with curves. You're yeah. gonna see. Yep. It's become one of our favorite dies and it's great for busting up your scraps. It is true. We have just kept coming up with more and more ideas and ways to use this die, haven't we? Oh, we have. And now, since you mentioned what a great scrap buster this die is, let's do just that and cut some of our studio scraps and see what we can come up with. All right, so Erica, we have these little box of scraps and these right. are actually from our studio. They are, and I did not plan them out. I took them off the top. I did press them because some of them were pretty lumpy bumpy, yep. but I've just got them here, so. Great, and so we wanna make sure that we're finding that lengthwise grain and it's parallel to okay. those lengthwise blades. So did you have some did you have some colors in mind? I don't know. I mean, of course, there's some purple there. We should totally do some We should some totally purple. do some purple. Here's some white. Okay. And I have my little rotary cutter and okay. my ruler. So we, we might can not just... even need that if we use the white for oh, yes. the background. Okay. Let's do that. So what colors do you like for the... Um, for the A. This, that's not big enough. No. Okay. So let's show them how to lay the fabric. This okay. is that salvage edge. Okay. 
right? This is the lengthwise grain right okay. here. And we can always do up to six layers. Um, so we'll, we should cut six. Okay. I think we should. Okay, and then Erica, let's, what do you want to do for A? Do you want to do purple? Uh, should we just do, do two do some purples. Yeah, we've got some purples here. Let's see. Oh, these are cut. I did not pre-cut these. No, we just have a scrap bin. Yep. Okay. And you I just don't know if I can do two or fold in half. I'm gonna fold. I'm gonna move it down just a little bit so that it's. You can do that. There you go. You can do four. Let's see. Is it gonna? I'm not sure if the bottom one's gonna. I think so. Okay. We'll try it and see. Okay. There we go. There's scraps, right? There we go. If not, there's more. Yeah. All right. So we just put our six by twelve cutting mat on it. We're gonna use our go fabric cut or go big because we can. That's right. And we're going to show you just some really fun ways to put the block together. Erica, so yes. do we have a block we want to show you? We do. Everybody? We do. Let me pull one out. We here. have dozens of blocks. We have so many. We've made so many. But here's just a basic one. All right. Okay. There we go. There we go. Perfect. And we'll put those back in the scrap bin because we have scraps to go. Right. All right. So let's talk about the sides. Okay. All okay. right. So, what I want to show you is we've cut off the dog ears. So, notice this edge is rounded. Yes. This edge is flat. So, when we go to put them together, we want those rounded edges That's to right. be sewn together. And then the flat edges will lay there as well. Okay? All right. So, round and flat, round and flat. Okay, and again, here's our rounded edges. And that really helped me when I was putting the block yes, together. Yes, when we first figured that out, you know, sometimes we start testing things before we have written directions. And so yes. um, sometimes we figure things out along the way, right. but it makes all the difference. So just right. remember to match up your dog ears and right. from there you're gonna be golden. And then this is important because this is how you know you did it right. Mm -hmm. is that when these are sewn together, right, these two yep. are going to meet exactly. together. Exactly. Okay? Exactly. So really fun and easy block to put together. Right. Totally perfect for scrap busting. I mean, it's it's basically, it is a four patch. Mm -hmm. It's just that it's like quarter square triangle. So here's two units, a sample of the two halves put together. And then you do, when you go to fold them over, see those dog ears fit, lining up? And your seams are going to line up here yep. along. Your center seam is going to line up. You can nest those, press those opposite directions to nest them. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to fit just perfectly. Yeah. And we made a great video on how to put them together. We did. We did. All right. And we've had so much fun with this die. I love it. That is just the tip of the iceberg, the very beginning of the fun you can have with this die. All right, now we love this black so much, we wanted to learn a little more about it. So we turned to the expert, Barbara Brackman. That's right. Barbara's an independent researcher who's published numerous books about quilts and quilt history. Among them are the recently revised Encyclopedia of Quilt Patterns. It indexes published patterns from 1880 to 1970. And I have that by my desk. At down, all times. All down. Me too. Yep. Barbara is one of the founding members of the American Quilt Study Group, and she writes a blog about quilt history called Material Culture. Be sure and check it out. That's right. All right, here is Barbara discussing the history of the Go Mill and Stars block. Let's take a look. Hi, it's Barbara Brackman. I'm going to talk today about a new die, a fairly new die, Mill and Stars, and tell you a little about the history of the pattern and a little bit about design. It was another Nancy Cabot pattern. If you look it up in my Encyclopedia of Pete's Quilt Patterns, you'll see that Nancy Cabot is the source for this particular uh, arrangement of this four-pointed star. Now, I talked about Nancy Cabot last month, and she, uh, she did hundreds of patterns for the Chicago Tribune. And Many of them were kind of difficult to do, and, and we have never found examples. But Millen Stars is, a, is one of her better designs, and I hope you will be inclined to, uh, to make one after I talk about this a little bit. 
It's a square with an X through the middle. So fairly easy to seam. No cut out corners, no, no Y seams, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Now, who is Nancy Cabot? I talked about her, as I said, a few week, weeks ago, and she was really a, like Betty Crocker, a made up name. She was uh, sort of managed by a woman named Loretta Leitner. Uh, who worked for the, the Chicago Tribune. But they gave her the name Nancy Cabot because you were supposed to think of her as a kind of a colonial lady or a descendant of a colonial lady. And I always think of this painting by Grant Wood of, uh, of the perfect Nancy Cabot. So this one appeared in her column. She She does not talk too much about the history of it. But she does go on with flights of fancy about Don Quixote and windmills, but you can you can ignore that. Um, one of the things she did in her in her drawing here of four blocks was show you a design principle that you probably are very aware of, but I'll I'll reiterate rotation. And so what's what goes one way in one block goes the other way in the next block. So she's rotated those blocks. Now, another thing you can do with this pattern is to work to do an, another really, I think, effective design principle, use uh, counter change, which is a fancy name for what's light in one block is dark in the other. And so you've got two different blocks here and like two different uh, Scotty dogs. And it, it really does make for a, a very rhythmic design. Now you could do your, mill and stars in the way that probably many people in the 1930s when Nancy was publishing patterns, the way many people did uh, them, which is just scrappy. They they were so thrilled to have new bright colors that were in pastels and didn't fade and all those new prints, which mixed various colors. That was all very novel in the early 30s. And uh, we were, and people were just thrilled to have all those and they loved to contrast a print and plain. And uh, Katie over here on the left has done a, a similar kind of a, a take on this particular uh, die. And I found lots of patterns, lots of examples of this kind of look in uh, looking through the quilt index for Mill and Stars or for Periwinkle, which is a, another name for this. Also, Mummingbird is another name. And you can see it kind of looks like a little, a little bird flying through the through the quilt. But most of these are done in the scrappy method with without a real overall view of you know any design principles except for Helene and Pastel and Colorful. So periwinkle or hummingbird is a, is a common name for it, but this is not the same pattern that Nancy gave you. And what makes Nancy's design and our mill and stars so clever is that this is a hard pattern to do. I there's It's not a square block. The, the, the very common periwinkle is an octagon plus this four, four pointed star. And as you can imagine, it's kind of tough to keep those octagons flat when you're working by adding one at a time. It's always easier, I think, to, to take a pattern and make it into a square, as you can see on the right. So on the one on the left, which uh, I would say we can call challenging and not for beginners, uh, modified by Nancy Cabot and her artists, and what, which is the pattern that we are giving you, is much, much easier and really can go together fairly fast. Now, I haven't seen many quilts actually made from Nancy Cabot's pattern, though. This is one from maybe the 50s. Love, I love that, those fabrics, uh, especially the pink and gray in there. Just those are the fabrics I remember from being a kid. And this might be the only one I could find that actually is made from Nancy Cabot's pattern. Uh, so many more were made from the octagon connected to that star. Too much work. So what it, whichever way you decide to set it, you're going to get fairly the same effect, um, whether it's on point or on the square. And the, the effect is these little birds, hummingbirds or stars floating through your quilt. 
Now here's one I found, and this is, is interesting because it has a border and how she obtained the border was just to shade this particular octagon darker. And I thought that was quite effective. Now using our die, which is square, you can get the same effect just by shading differently. So I thought that was rather clever and another good design. So today we've talked more about design than history, but do enjoy that mill and stars because I think you can get some really effective quilts out of it. Thanks a lot for letting me talk about quilt history. Oh, Barbara, thanks for joining us. She knows all the things. She does, she does, and she's right. I mean, I love learning the history. Right, But right. Um, I actually made these after hearing her initially talk about it because she was talking about the reverse. Right, right. So it makes such a difference in the pattern. But really with this one, you almost need to see four squares put right. together. Right, Because that's how you get that mill, mm -hmm. that windmill. And that effect. border where they were solids and then had yes, the edge. That and the was... white around the outside yeah. so that you got that scalloped edge yeah. feel. That was so cool. I just think it's great. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, now that we've learned a little bit of history about right. the dye right. and we've showed it off a little bit, I think we should give one away. What do you think? Uh, I think that's a good idea. Our giveaways are one way we like to say thank you for registering for our shows and being a part of the AccuQuilt family. All right. Today's lucky winner of a Go Mill and Stars 8 inch finish die is drum roll, please. VNT from Lake Wacomas, Missouri. Congratulations. Congratulations. If I said your name wrong, I'm sorry. But you get to win a Mill and Stars die, so. There you go. Now, since today's show is all about choosing colors that pop in the Mill and Stars block, we want to know. What's your go-to color for fabric? Oh, I think this is a great question. Yeah. Let us know in the comment section from wherever you stream our show. Is there one color that you always have just a little bit of that color in there? Or right. one color, your favorite background color, maybe? Right. Or if you're looking at your quilt and it's not really making that pop, what's the one color you add to go, oh, oh now it yeah, makes it yeah. yep. phenomenal. So exactly. anywhere in the comment section. All right. Now, earlier we cut a scrappy block and we talked about that. And right. now we know that scrappy actually makes it very historically accurate. Right. But let's take a look at some other design options. All right. I was intrigued by one of Barbara's pictures that had star points as the constant solid with what I would think of as a background as scrappy. And boy, does that change the look. Do we have, yes, we yes. do. Okay. So this is the block that I made um, for our AQ live show. And so these are solids and these are scrappy, whereas Well, here, those are all solids here. Here, yep, hand me that one, yep. All right, so, you know, these are scrappy right here. Right. So I like the fact that it makes the secondary pattern that kind of looks like, um, a wheel, a wagon wheel kind yes, of look. Yes, right. Yeah, you lose the star effect, but and here you do. Here you do, yep. yeah. All right. All right, so the one thing we really love about it is that secondary right. pattern. And to get that, you really need that more than one block. So we've done some work in Electric Quilt or Eight design software, otherwise known as EQ8. Now, if you aren't familiar with EQ8, it's a design software that we sell on our website, right. along with plenty of other blocks. Now, it has this classic block in the software, so let's take a look. Okay, so okay. the first one we're going to look at is all scrappy. This so is this is all scrappy. There we go. All right, so this is perfect for the holiday seat, you know, for Thanksgiving or fall, but all of the pieces are scrappy. They're all different, right? Okay, so let's see what it looks like in EQ8. This one is absolutely so much fun. Right, and this is just kind of a mock-up, but it definitely gives you a whole different look. Uh, obviously, the f those bright colors really pop, right. don't they? Right. Okay. All right, so the next one is Mill and Stars, Scott, Mill and Starry Sky. So we have setting triangles. So we've got two colors, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, we did one with just two colors. So we did the white here for the star points and mm -hmm. the dark blue for the outside. And then let's see what it looks like when we put several together. Look at that. 
So there you see those shapes, but you don't see them as individual pieces. You know, it's like right. you don't see the slices of the pizza, you see the whole pizza. Oh, well, now I really want pizza for lunch. Right, why didn't we order I that? don't know. Okay, so now <laughs> we're gonna take those same blocks and we're gonna add setting squares. So check this out, because this is one of my favorite new things. So here we've taken just solid squares and randomly placed them between the stars and it makes it very modern, right. very random. We turned them on point. No, no we didn't. They're just They're flat just on, squares. yeah. It just makes it such a different look. Okay, and I love everything about this because mm -hmm. it is so random and it is so modern mm -hmm. and I could totally see it with a black background and like white stars when one of them be hot pink. Well, there you go. I know, I See, have a project I loved for this it with afternoon. the indigo blue in the background because mm -hmm. then it really does look like those that sky. Okay. All right. So the next one we've got is with the same block and you'll see that we've changed the colors around. So it's kind of like we had with Barbara's where we took the colors, the difference between having the, the dark colors where you've got your color right. placement. Right. All right, so let's see what it looks like in EQ8. Now look at this. Okay, so the difference between having the white be the star points right. versus the white be in the outer pieces is right. all the difference. It's completely different. Completely it? different. And the one on the right looks like peppermint candies. Doesn't it? You kind of got to look for it though. But the one on the left is such obviously the like the, the windmill. Scrapping, the scrappy one I made. Yeah, yeah. I really and it like gives this. you that real windmill look. Okay. And did our good friend Katie do these she for did, us? No, I did those, did but we I did those. So proud yeah, of you. We've got some magic that Katie's done a little later. So remember this group, those are just for inspiration. But that last one got me thinking about Christmas and you really could do the same thing for any holiday. Right, you so, can make Hanukkah blocks, you could right, make. Um, right. So you made Thanksgiving. So this was very fall. This is totally Valentine's. Yes, Valentine's. Let's see what, here's another fall, very fall-like one. You can tell I was in some of my scraps. Right, and you can tell I did this one because it's Valentine's. The blues, the different for blues winter. for winter and that starry sky. So just look at the difference between the two, that two different shades of blue make. Yeah. Right? Right. But you could do greens, greens and whites for uh, St. Patrick's Day. You yeah. could come up with pastels for Easter. Well, and you like could make this. it look like sunflowers, you know, with yellows and browns and greens. So many options. Okay. And there's a blog, yes? Yes. I knew so. it would be. Today's blog is all about Milan stars? I believe so. Okay, we should know. We should. All right, one thing that we've discovered about the Millen Stars is that it's just your, not your run-of-the-mill block. Yes. Thank you. Not only can you put Waited the block all day on for that point comment. for a different look, but you can use partial blocks as setting triangles. Okay, so we thought this was brilliant. Yes, and you where's have our some, partial blocks? No, you've you got them, them over there. Do I? Oh, yeah. I do. Do you have some purple blocks? Purple yeah. And pink? Okay. Okay, so here's what... We did, yep. So there put them go. on, put them on point. So look at this. So this is a half block. Remember, these are the ones Erica sewed. Mm -hmm. And then now we can use them as the setting triangles. So that just keeps the design going all the way out. Isn't that cool looking? Whoever thought of that, that was brilliant. Yes. Yeah, I think that's fabulous. Yes. All right, are you feeling inspired? Yes. There is more to come. Yes. I, I have to say, when we got this die, you and I both were like, oh, this is going to be one this of our favorites. This is going to be fun, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hi, and speaking of fun, yes. uh, let's share our colorful fabric selections that our good friends at Robert Kaufman oh, send yes. us to give away. Okay, so Where's we have mine? It is not folded pretty. Oh, okay. <laughs> but this one is folded pretty. So this is from our good friends at Robert Kaufman. This is Elizabeth Hartman fabric. Yes. I love that. But look at these yummy solids. And you know what? Those yummy solids are going to show up in a sample later yeah. on in our trunk show coming up. Yeah. So we have two of these selections of fabrics. So let's give the first one away. Um, the first winner of a Robert Kaufman fabric selection is, drum roll please. 
Debbie L. of Bristol, Connecticut. Congratulations. And the winner of the second selection of fabric is, drum roll please. It's Janice C. from Yukon, Oklahoma. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Huge thank you to Robert Kaufman for sponsoring today's show. We know our quilters are going to love using this fabric to make their quilts. It's beautiful. It's going to make them pop. It is. Since the Gull Millen Stars block is an 8-inch finished block, let's take a look at some other 8-inch blocks that will plan with it. Okay, so of course I think we should start with the 8-inch mix and match cube, right? Right. And you could just totally make a star block with that. And right. Okay. So any mix and match block, think about just a basic four patch or some others. I don't... Do we I have, have one a, right here. You have one right there. Sometimes in my magic box... <laughs> Sometimes in my magic box, I have things. Now, if you're not familiar with our Go Cube system, each mix and match cube has eight shapes that will all work together to make over 72 different blocks. Now, we're talking about our eight inch because, of course, that's going to match up beautifully mm -hmm. with this eight inch finished block. But the cube comes in seven different sizes, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, and twelve. That's right, and they are building blocks of our entire Go system mm -hmm. and can help you create so many blocks. Like a simple four patch right here, you could make pinwheels to make more complicated ones. So here's a look at combining the Go Millen Stars with a Sawtooth Star block, which yes. you can make from your cube. So here we have a picture of it. Look at this one, Erica. Look at this. So this pulls those Christmas colors again. Yes. And look at the designs that you get. It's very different. But that sawtooth star really just makes it almost three-dimensional looking, yeah. adding that in. I love it. So right off the bat, we were thinking about other dyes to combine this with. And one of them was one of my very favorites. It's Hattie's Choice. Okay. So here. here. Let's you want to put it blue. with a blue one? Yeah. Okay. We'll do it with a blue one. Listen, we have so many blocks, we could just play <laughs> we, with them forever. We've gotten just a wee yeah. bit carried away. We had a question about this because some of our viewers thought that the Millen Stars die had the same shapes as right. Hattie's Choice. And they do not, because Hattie's not. Choice has the, the kite shape, and then this is much smaller. And the diamond and right. the triangles. But these pieces meet in the middle, yes, which is its beautiful way of working together. So those points are going to line up, and you can do some really fun things with it. Okay. Now our very own Katie has done some EQ8 magic and done some spectacular designs for us with more inspiration. That's right. All right, so let's see the two inspiration. Okay, have to say, Katie, Katie always nails it, right? Right. The one on the left, mm -hmm. that is so beautiful to me. I love it. Because the white and the Hattie's Choice is just that minimal two mm -hmm. colors and then the Millen Stars two colors and the rest is white. Yes. I, that is probably one of my it's, favorite patterns ever. All in the color placement. And mm -hmm. look how different it is. But I have to say the one on the left is my favorite as well. Yeah. Good job, Katie. All right. Oh, so we have to stop we, looking. We, were, we, we focus. All right. So <laughs> next we we're going to start talking about other 8-inch black and board dyes. And we came up with another great dye, the Go oh, Weather. Oh, the Go Weather Vein. Do you have a purple one over there? Let's see. Oh. Yes. Do I have a purple one over there, she said. Silly girl. Silly me. Silly me. Okay, so weather vein. This is such a great dye. It really and is. And you, in your quilting head, you think it has Y seams. It has no it Y doesn't. seams. It doesn't. And once again, those center points are going to line right. up. Right. So you're really going to get some fun, some fun looks with this. Right. And I would love to see a whole quilt like this. So I bet Katie's got some. Uh, oh yeah, let's see what Katie for did for us. Oh, just in time for fall. Look oh, wow. at how pretty that is. Yes. It looks like candy corn. Now she's put it on point in this one, right? Yes, yes, both of them on point. So that changes the look completely. It does. It totally does. Yeah, that's does. great. Yeah. I like that one. And again, it might look complicated, but it is not. It is right. really easy to put together. There's no Y seams. But one other one we think about that we think is going to go perfect is the Go Maple Leaf. Dye. Yes. Okay, so let's switch to fall. Okay, here. Let's switch the set. Here, let's make it 4th of oh, July. Okay, there we go. I love this Maple Leaf block so much. 
And the great thing about maple leaf is it has the stem piece, right? That's yes. What everybody wonders is how to do the stem. And it is a nine patch that finishes to eight inches. Right, so these are shapes you don't have in other cubes, right. which makes them really versatile because squares and half squares, you can do so many different designs with them. I do love I these do two like colors. these two together. This is fun. We could put them on point. That you would could. be fun too. You could. Okay, well, at the risk of us running away with the show. Let's see what Katie let's did see what us. Katie did. Oh, look, she made yes. a ton in fall she colors. She went definitely for fall. Yeah, those are really fun. And the one in the center is great because that um, maple leaf dye, when you put it together like that, it gets those little hash, those little um, stems all together. And it looks right. fabulous. Right, it gives you a whole different look. Yeah. Okay. I had one less to show, but I don't know. All right, we have so many options with this die, and here's just a few more of Katie's creations. First, we have some with the Feather Star, which is a beautiful 16 inch finish. Right, block. but she's also combined it with the Snail's Trail. Yes. So let's look at this. So she's used it like a medallion mm -hmm. in the center, taken that Snail's Trail, and built out. Okay. Wow. No, 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 no. She's taken the half oh, blocks from the, the half feather blocks stars. From the feather star, yeah. Yes, yes. And then she built it in two different colorways. And I bet now she has one with snail trail. Yes. See, we had yes, to wait for does. the graphic. Oh, I got all combined. Okay. <gasps> oh yes, right. Right. And the one on the right, again, one of my favorites because it's that red, white, and blue. I just think it has such great motion. I think we're seeing a theme here. I think we're seeing that white is one of our go-to colors for Pam and I. Yes. For making things pop. I think we can always already tell that just from our reactions right. to the things that we're seeing right. on the screen. Well, don't forget how easy it is to put any quilt block on point with our setting triangle. So we talked about using a half block, but you can also use our setting triangles. Okay. So we have some cut here. We do. Imagine that. Oh, those are pretty. I, those go well together. <laughs> we have so many. Sometimes we work it out, Erica, so that it works together. So okay. the setting triangles make it easy to put those on point because they're gonna cut those side pieces that you need. And they're also gonna cut the corner pieces. And they're laid out on the die so that the lengthwise grain is gonna give you that tight lengthwise grain on the outside of your quilt because you don't want to be wonky. Actually, that looks quite stunning. I like, like that, that with doesn't the gray. it? Mm -hmm. That dark gray. Mm -hmm. I think we found another go-to color. For uh, yeah, so I'm gonna tell you gray and black mm -hmm. are one of my go-to colors because sometimes if I'm looking at, at like a whole mm -hmm. quilt, that pop of black, there is a scrappy, quilt that is my all-time favorite, and I can't think of the name of it, that um, has that, maybe it's even Log Cabin, but it has just pops of black in it, mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. think it's fabulous. Yes. Okay, so setting triangles allows you to turn your blocks on point. And, and we have easy, and there's no math, so. Setting triangles for all the That's sizes right. of cubes. That's right. Okay. So if you think these our ideas are mind-blowing, wait until you see some of our new patterns coming up in our trunk show. We've got one last idea that we found in our, in our goodie box here. Okay, this isn't totally on Erica. Yeah, this is, so for those of you like me who set, save your salvage edges. But only fun ones. Only fun ones, yes. So these are fun ones. And then just sew them onto a plain piece of fabric, cut it out and make your star points or your outer points. Mm -hmm. So I just sewed them onto a plain piece of white fabric and then cut yes. it out. And um, um, we have one from Larkspur Quilts. Yes. Coming up that is the same concept. Just wait. All right, earlier in the show we ask, what is your go-to fabric color? Let us know in the comments section wherever you stream the show. We've been giving you some great ideas yeah. of ours already. Yeah. All right, quilters, at the start of the year, we introduced our Paying It Forward campaign called Covering the World One Quilt at a Time. This campaign 
<coughs> excuse me, is a collaboration between AccuQuilt and Moda Fabrics with Baby Lock as our sponsor. Together, one person from each of our teams is donating a quilt each week of 2022 to the charity of their choice. And you and I are the last two of the year. We are the end. Yep. Last week's donation was made by AccuQuilt go-getter Yvette Niesel. Now, she made her quilt using foundation paper piecing alongside with traditional piecing. Yvette donated her quilt to the Orphan Kitten Club, which saves the lives of motherless kittens found as strays in shelters that may not have the resources needed to care for them. Isn't I that? I think that's very that sweet. so sweet. And I've heard yes. other people like take their orphan blocks and put them together and make quilts, you know, mm -hmm. for, you know, shelters and such. Right. So be sure to visit our website for details on how you, our viewers, can participate in covering the world one quilt at a time by go to learn.accuquilt.com slash quilt the world 2022. You can also follow hashtag quilt the world 2022 on social media to see fellow quilters donations during the year. I wonder what we're going to do next year. I wonder. Okay. Hmm. It's time to get into some more inspiration with today's trunk show. Erica, what quilts do we have today? She has oh, a whole pile of them. We have got some great ones. Wait till you see. Okay. We're going to start with one of Pam and my new this absolute favorites. Hands down. One of my new favorites. So this here, we'll get the dark up here. This is the Go Siam Sunset Throw Quilt by Anita Amador. Anita, you hit this one out of the park. She it did. It's just stunning. I love that variegated color mm -hmm. and you could totally use ombre fabrics or you could totally um, just change it up. On our Wednesday show when we talk about the Mill and Stars die, um, we're making kind of an, uh, an ombre kind of uh, block out of it. So this is so pretty. And here she's teamed it up with the triangle and a square. Mm -hmm. And then our square on point. Yes, and a square and a square. And a square and a square and a square. So she used the eight inch cube mm -hmm. and the mill and star style. And you should see the back because it's beautiful. Love this fabric. It's really it was pretty. perfect for it. All right, the next one that we have is the Go Geodesic Stars. And this is so fun. This is a really good size quilt. Hold on, I'm gonna try oh, and do please. a ta-da moment. Okay, you ready? Ta-da. Ta-da. And does this fabric look familiar, Erica? This is from Ellen Alt of Handmade 3D. And yes. she used, wait, Robert Kaufman fabric. Yes, she did. If you want to hold that down just a wee bit, there we go. I'll hold it. Yeah. I'll kind of fold it in. So you can okay. see those, the hot pink, the purples. See? I like that. Purple. Out towards the, you know, the orange and the yellow. I just love it. And the quilting is stunning. It really helps give it that three-dimensional effect. I do love that wavy look. Mm -hmm. And there's that fun print fabric on the back. Ah, Elizabeth Hartman fabric. There Very good go. friends at Robert Hoffman. All right. Now, I hesitate to even bring this one out because Pam's going to try and steal it because Lynn okay. isn't here to steal anything. Jen Belknap of the Smitten Chicken, you are the winner today for me. Oh my goodness, because isn't this fun? Look at this pillow she made. It's called the Go Millen Stars Halloween Pillow. So I downloaded the pattern. I know you find that hard to believe. And because I wondered <laughs> how Jen did this. Yes. So what she did was she just said, take some blacks and whites and grays and cut them different widths and kind of yes. cut them wonky and then create new fabric and then she cut it out and added it to the Mill and Star Stack. But I thought Erica might just pass out with the <gasps> little purple I, and the little bats. I love this with the little bats. Aren't those, I mm -hmm. I mean, this is, and here this this little print. Yeah, so this little print. Um, Jen, we need to talk fabric too. Yeah, and there's um, just cute, cute white. Cute little black and white print. Yeah, okay, and if I were Lynn, I would steal this one. Yes, yes. But indeed. she's not here, so it's okay. Okay. Next, we have the Go Twinkling Stars while hanging by our good friend Katie Swigert. And this one is uh, the one on the packaging, right, mm -hmm. Erica? It is. I love this one because to me, this is like a modern version yes. of one made with those 30s prints, right? Yes. So those reproduction kind of prints that are the in these blues. kind of aqua, the, the kind of the pink, the mint green. Yes. And, and yet it's Fabulous. so modern and fresh and it's got, look, it had a white background. And then here's that aqua on the background. And I love her quilting. She just- the Quilting is really cool. Really pretty things. Good job, Katie. All right, and Katie used our free design tool, Go Quilt, to create some new colorways to imagine these patterns in a different way. 
The first image of each pattern is the default colorway, and the second image you'll see is to inspire you even more. So first up, we have the Go Mill and Stars Throw Quilt by Marianne Fontana of Fontana Originals. And it's behind us. Oh, here, I can walk here. Look at that. You can see this is, this is very clean, modern, black mm -hmm. and white. Yep, and she used her eight inch cube here because these are quarter square triangles to make it, it's just fabulous. Yes. Okay, so let's see what it looks like in a different colorway. Look at that. Ooh. So the here's blue is pretty. Three completely different colorways. Okay, we have Gryffindor House on the far <laughs> left. <laughs> We've got go. the blue and white. I do like the blue and white. Yes. I just think it's so pretty. You could totally do your uh, school colors in it. Okay. Oh yeah, you could. Okay. Any colors. Yep. Okay. So the next one that we have up, and this is a big one. I folded it kind of inside out so that we can. Oh, Mitzi Red did this. I've read she Homestead. Did. Okay, I'm gonna this hold it. This is the Go Winter Windows Throw Quilt by Mitzi Red. She's used Wandering Ways. Pam and I both are a fan of this one. And then she's put sashing. Uh, winding corner, Ways. Winding Ways. It's like, wait. Wandering that's not, Ways? No, Winding Ways. Winding Luke Hayes ways. Call, Luke Haynes calls it Wandering Path, but it's Winding Ways. Winding Ways. And um, Oh, happy Mill birthday, Luke. Yeah. He turned 40 he the did. other day. And I think that this is so cool because the uh, winding ways has such great motion, yeah. and yet the star, you know, the mill and stars is just so and it's, geometric. It's similar in the the how the blocks laid out. Yes. It's just with the different color and shapes, the curve versus the yes. angular. And I love that the red is in different shades and the grays are in different shades. Yeah, it's fun. It's really warm and snuggy. I might take this and the pillow because our our hot weather is now gone. Yes. All right, and next up we've we got, want to oh, see we've the got, image. Oh, yes, Katie's image. Okay, so the it, one on the left can, uh, with the black and the orange and the yellow, mm -hmm. that creates a totally different colorway with that background. Yes, and then the one in the middle with the red and the black and the white, it's, it's, it's very bold, yes. very modern. And I feel like the blue one would be fun for winter. Snowflakes. Snowflakes. See, and I didn't see snowflakes in it before. No, no, did you not? Oh, no. yeah, snowflakes. No. All the days. But now I see snowflakes in it completely. Okay. And then we have one last table runner. This is yes. the Go Starstruck table runner by our good friend Marian Fontana of Fontana Originals. Now, this is with our Hattie's Choice die. Mm -hmm. You can see, so you can get the feel of what it would look like. It's really fun putting mm -hmm. those two together. Yeah, and here I'm going to hold and that. This is very much your, your, uh, Oh, fall campfire colors. and fall colors. Yes, yeah. I like that. All right, so let's see what Katie came up with for our quilt image. So here it is for all the seasons, right? Yes. You can have winter and fall and spring. I love the yellow and blue. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just feel like that's such a yellow fun. Yellow and blue is a classic combination, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is great. Now, all of these patterns are available as free downloads on Active Quilt's website. So be sure to get your patterns downloaded before your dies arrive. That way you'll be ready to go. Yes, and everybody should be making Halloween pillows. Yes. All right, quilters, it's time to give away our final prize of the day. Let's say thank you to our quilters one more time. Let's do it. All right, the second lucky winner of a Go Mill and Stars eight inch finish die is, drum roll please. <laughs> David H. from Stafford, Virginia. Congratulations, Congratulations David. David. Be sure and post your finished projects with it. That's right. All right, right, quilters. Now, earlier in the show, we asked you, what's your go-to color for fabric? And I have some responses. Okay. All right, so thanks to our team. So um, lots of people said they like blues and purples and greens, okay. reds and blacks. Yep. Right? Red isn't one we talked about, but always. No, it isn't. But white and gray. Ooh. And Lynn said she loves autumn colors. They kind of help things pop. Mm -hmm. And Joelle, or Jonelle, yeah, Jonelle, sorry, picks the colors based on the person she's making the quote for. Maybe it's her favorite color. I like that. Sometimes it's not as easy as you think to find a background color. No. You know, and do you like solids or do you like prints? Yeah. And Anne loves those earth tones. That really makes it. So I brought a couple colors on because I thought it would be interesting to just lay it across and see mm -hmm. how different it looks. See, look how pretty that is. Look how different it looks on the white versus next to the blue. Mm -hmm. 
And I have this fabric at home. <laughs> I'm sure it came from my home. Probably. Okay, so this is really cool because we have three solids and then one print. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that, to me, makes the pop, mm -hmm. right? If you have all solids and then just to add a print, like this is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I wish I had more of this fabric. Yes, I love that. So this can be something like a teal could be a go-to mm -hmm. color too, especially mm -hmm. if you love it like I do. So, mm -hmm. um, but it's just interesting to see just you call it auditioning and laying things out and seeing how they relate to others, you can get such totally different looks. All right. Well, quilters, don't forget, we've got some special deals for you. To get your order in, open a new tab in your browser, type in accuquilt.com slash party. It'll take you to the site, show you the current deals, and you can place your order all in one place. All in one fell swoop there. We have the Go Millen Stars 8-inch finished tie with a matte bundle to get your hands on today because it is now part of our permanent collection. That's right. It comes with a Millen Star die and a 6 by 12 cutting mat. But if you want to get a few more bobs with your Go Mill and Stars die, snatch up the Go Block On Board Favorites 8-inch die bundle. You'll get three other great 8-inch finish bob dies, including one of my favorites, Hattie's Choice, along with the Maple Leaf and the Weather Vane, two cutting mats to help you get started on your next bob-filled project. I have to say those are three of my favorite 8-inch yeah, bobs. Yeah, they really are. Now, every so often we have special events because we're excited to share more quilting fun with everyone. That's right. So be sure to join us again at 12 noon central time for all of our special events like the ones that are coming up soon. That's right. And on Tuesday at 12 noon central time, we have launch parties like the one we had today. These events are filled with more tips, tricks, inspiration, and colorful trunk shows. Be sure to register for our next launch party on our events page as well. All right, quilters, don't forget to join me every Wednesday at 12 noon Central Time for AccuQuilt Live. We have tons of fun, especially learning how to make one of our fun patterns from our trunk show. You can register for all of our AQ Live events on the events page, and that way, again, you're going to be entered to win door prizes, and I hope to see you there. That's right. Well, it is time for us to go sew and get ready for all of our special events coming up. We hope you enjoyed today's colorful project ideas for the now permanent Go Mill and Stars 8-inch finished die, as well as learning about the block's vivid history. All right, closers, thanks so much for joining us today. If you've been waiting for our show to end before you buy, now is that time. Here's the link right now. Get everything you need while it's available. And remember, at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time. So you can quilt more. Goodbye. Bye-bye.